There's a lot of exploits that break Raft. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. I played this game probably a little too much, and that means that I've had plenty of time to encounter all of the weird stuff that you can do in Raft. There's quite a few exploits that I think every player should know, whether they're actually useful or just funny, but a video going over all of the glitches and exploits that Raft has to offer would certainly be over an hour long, so instead, I've just chosen some of my favorites to share with you lovely folks today. As always, if you enjoy the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, it would be much appreciated. Also, this video was inspired by a similar one by Salmons about Stardew Valley, so you should go check that one out too. But without further ado, here's 10 exploits that break Raft. Of course, no self-respecting survival or farming indie game is complete without some way to duplicate literally every item in the game, and Raft is no exception. You can duplicate anything you want pretty darn easily in this game, so if you need stacks of titanium to make all of those fun machines that you discovered while playing through chapter 3, and you don't feel like trying to dig up 40 billion treasure spots to get all of the ore you need, let alone waiting for everything to get done smelting if you decide to take the easy route and trade for the ore, then fear not, because the item duplication glitch is here for you. And like I said, it's ridiculously easy to pull off. Players do it accidentally a lot more often than you might think. So let's say I've got my measly stack of titanium bars that I've worked ever so hard for, and I just want to fill this chest with titanium. First, you gotta save the world in the pause menu. You don't need to beat the game for this. Then you take everything you want to duplicate back out of the chest and just exit the game back to the main menu. Make sure that you save the world again when you do this part. Now that you're back in the main menu, act like you're going to load up that world again that you were just in, but click the world backups button towards the lower right. In that little menu that appears, select the second option from the top because that's a save you made when everything was in the chest. When you load back into your world, you'll have two whole stacks of titanium this time. You can repeat this as many times as you like, and you can duplicate up to a full inventory in one go, meaning that this quickly becomes an exponential dupe. Basically, it works because character save files and world save files are separate in Raft, and by saving the world in a separate state than your character, you pretty much guarantee the benefits of both, which is pretty nifty. And it's a nice way to get tons of those hard-to-farm materials. Barriers and walls in Raft are purely optional if you know what you're doing. That and chairs ignore physics. This exploit was most commonly used to do what we like to call Tangaroa Skip in the speedrun world, but you can do it with any physical location throughout Raft, and it's also incredibly easy to pull off. First step is build yourself a nice big ramp. If you want to clip into the base of Tangaroa, it needs to be 8 roofs tall. Then simply place a floor of your choice at the end of your ramp, and then a chair on top of that floor. From here, you literally just float towards your desired location, and you'll go straight through any wall that's in your way. You can use this to go directly into the bridge of Tangaroa and skip the whole city if your ramp is 105 roofs tall and achieve the glorious Tangaroa skip skip. Or you can skip all of Utopia with just 85 roof blocks and scare Olaf away with your ignorance of all things physics, which is also pretty darn fun. You can achieve a pretty similar effect using the detail planks that you unlock via the trading posts, too. Detail planks have a pretty lenient placement requirement and also have a relatively small footprint, which makes them ideal for building inside of story locations. YouTuber Let's Game It Out did a wonderful job of demonstrating just how broken this can get, although it can't help you go through walls like a chair does, at least not consistently and easily. The thing that makes detail planks really broken is that you can use them to just ignore the underwater sections of any island that you want. Just by building a downwards ramp, you can just walk off your raft down into the water, which the game doesn't really register as you leaving your raft, and therefore it won't apply the underwater effect to trigger your oxygen meter or the swimming animations. Meaning that the large island that had all of that metal and copper way deep down and you kept having to resurface before you could grab any much of it, that's no longer a problem. Just grab your detail planks and build your way down. <laughs> then you can harvest the resources to your heart's content without a worry in the world. It also prevents the aquatic threats from aggroing on you too, so now you can say hi to Jeremiah without him trying to take a bite out of you. Just be sure to stay on your little plank path and you can truly explore what it means to live under the sea.
but the stuff you can do with detailed planks and building ramps aren't the only ways that you can really screw up the way story locations are meant to be played. Specifically, one of the most fun exploits you can do to break a number of the story islands is just clipping your camera into unintended areas to skip large parts of a location's puzzle. The basics of performing the exploit is as easy as just going into third person. If you want something easy to do in third person, your reach distance for items is actually ever so slightly longer in third person, so if you're swimming to pick up any resources, third person is high key the way to go. If you're looking for something a bit more advanced though, then you'll need to head to one of a few story locations. There are a few useful third person clips at Tangaroa and Temperance, but my favorite clip by far is from the Vasagatan, or the second story location, the cruise ship. So to play this location normally, you're supposed to enter through the bottom of the ship and solve a number of puzzles to advance up each floor, and you can't open any of the exterior doors from the outside, so for the casual player, the dark depths full of rats is your only option. Unless you get comfortable with third person clip, that is. Remember what I said about not being able to open doors from the outside? Well, that's technically true, but you can definitely tease it with some careful control of your camera. Basically, you can open the first layer by simply looking at the door above the bar, and then from there, if you jump up to that balcony, you can clip your third person camera onto the door on the floor above you to open all subsequent doors. This works because you're technically inside the boat, just on the wrong floor, and the game doesn't care about that. So yeah, you can completely break the game just by using third person. I would be remiss in my duties of reporting exploits that break the game if I didn't include the most quintessential of game physics breaking exploits, which is of course the classic floating floors glitch. For anyone who's building inclined and hasn't been initiated into the cult yet, here's a super simple method to make all of your floors clean without the need for vertical pillars every two squares, and a more resource friendly method than just making horizontal pillars. In the past, I've advised using cheap pillars for this, but Chapter 3 changed their resource requirements, so now I'd recommend using the cheap wood windows for this purpose. Just stack the windows up to your desired floor height, and then build triangle floors off of the sides. Then you can successfully remove your scaffolding windows, and bam, you got some floating floors. So if you needed to make a large empty space, and you don't want to invest all of the wood and nails necessary for horizontal pillars, this little exploit is perfect for you. So, you know how you thought physics was real? It's not, and it cannot hurt you. In case you needed more proof of this beyond the floating floors glitch, you can make almost anything float using this one shelf exploit. Any kind of object that isn't locked into the building grid, with the exception of the new advanced crop plots, can be placed on a shelf and will therefore work with this glitch, which means that you can make some weird stuff float. And again, this is super easy to pull off, so no concerns here. Simply place two walls of your choice against each other, this also works with windows if you really want to save on resources, and then place a shelf on either side of that wall cubby. Then place whatever object you want to float on one of the shelves, and destroy the wall that holds the other shelf. Bam, you got yourself a floating object. This notably works super well with carpets, so you can create tons of fun shapes using this technique that you couldn't otherwise make in the base game. Specifically, rounded shapes or sails work really really well. Anyways, this is one of the best building exploits out there for aesthetic use. In case you needed another building exploit that breaks some other kinds of physics, then the grass plot exploit is here for you. Really, there's not a whole lot to say about this other than that collisions simply don't matter on grass plots. You place a grass plot down, and then you can just place infinite numbers of other kinds of farming plots and a few other decoration items in it. Tree plots are distinctly fun because you can normally only fit one in a pretty large area, but if you just put down a single grass plot, suddenly you can fit 20 trees in the exact same area. Honestly, this is great for ultra compact farms, but be careful of overusing it because it can tank your frame rates. Still, would definitely recommend using this in moderation though. If you're like me and still struggling to get the artistic collection achievement like I am, then boy do I have an exploit for you. With the metal detector, you can dig up four types of treasures. The trash pile, which is useless for our purposes, the tiki piece, which is great if you're going for the former glory achievement, or a safe or a briefcase, which is what we're actually interested in. 
those two types of treasures have a chance to drop the more useful kinds of loot in addition to the eight dev paintings which you'll need for that artistic collection achievement, but you only have a small chance to get them with any treasure you dig up. If you want to know exactly how small that chance is, I've already done that math once and I have no intentions of ever doing it again. But because there's such a small chance to get a dev painting from any given treasure spot, you may be interested in a small exploit that lets you re-roll your chances infinitely until you get what you're looking for. It's just a simple save repeat too, so this is accessible even to the newest of exploit enjoyers. Simply dig up a treasure spot all the way. If it's a tiki piece or a trash pile, just pick it up and move on. But if you get a safe or a briefcase, you're going to want to save your game, then pick up the treasure. If you get what you want, perfect, no exploit needed. But say you get a load of junk and you want another chance at that dev painting. Just exit your world without saving, then reload back into your world. The safe respawns and you get to try again. This mostly works because treasure comes from a loot table and it's not predetermined, meaning you can easily get infinite tries to create that gallery you so desperately wanted. There's shockingly more than one way that you can teleport vertically in Raft. The first uses ziplines, and you just need a zipline that goes directly vertical. Just note that to get any real height, your zipline anchor will need to be significantly higher than you actually want to teleport, but it's a fast and resource efficient way to build a floating base in combination with the floating floors that we showed off earlier. But if you're more interested in, say, climbing a large tower instantaneously with only two clicks, then you'll probably be interested in this second technique. So this little tower is only for demonstration purposes, and you can really build this up to be as tall as you want it, not just three measly walls. Anyways, I find that this works best by stacking cheap beds on top of each other so that they are slightly less than half of a wall apart, but technically you can do this with any item or items that have a hitbox large enough to cover the whole area of the bed. All you want to make sure is that your character doesn't have enough space to stand up on the bed when you wake up, and you'll instantly be teleported all the way to the lowest available space you fit in. So, wherever you put your floor, basically. It's a super easy way to get up large spaces. Getting back down is up to you, though. And finally, for all of you less combat-inclined people, there's a few great ways that you can cheese most of the significant fights in the game. The most general tip here is arrow spam. Most enemies receive a little stun when they take damage, and the melee weapons have too much of a cast time to really capitalize on this. The same isn't true with arrows. Arrows do a set amount of damage depending on the arrow type and your difficulty level, so regardless of how much or how little time you spend charging your bow, you will always do that same damage. So if you want to get really close to a bear, you can just spam a ton of stone arrows and the bear is unlikely to ever hit you back. This technique also works great against hyenas, including the mutant variety. Combining this arrow spam strat with the convenient safe spot right outside the mama bear cave also makes that fight incredibly easy, so this is most certainly an exploit to keep in mind if you're not a huge fan of fighting the animals but still need to protect yourself occasionally. And those are 10 exploits that completely break Raft in one way or another. Honestly, I use most of these in my casual playthroughs, and I think they're a great time, so I thought you all might enjoy them as much as I do. Be sure to let me know which exploit was your favorite, or if you think there were any others that I should have included. Anyways, I think that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.